Hello everybody, another game in the Stratomatic Demolition League that I felt like playing on video. Uh, it's kind of late on a Sunday night, I'm kind of awake and can't sleep right now, so just finished doing the live stream of the Inside Pitch 1967 game between the Orioles and the Tigers. But I figured, what the hey, let's throw out a Stratomatic game as well, get our Stratitude on. And this is the first game for both of these teams, second game of the Stra of the Demolition League itself and we are in Miami I believe it's Lone Depot Park or whatever they call it. I don't know what the official name of Miami's I think yeah that's what it says Lone Lone Depot Park in Miami between the Orioles and the Miami Marlins starting pitchers for today's game for the Marlins it is Sandy Alcantara he was 7 and 12 with a 414 ERA he was their opening day starter in real life and Kyle Gibson starts for Baltimore. He was also their real-life starter in opening day. He was 15-9 with a 4.73 ERA. So those are your two starting pitchers. There are your lineups right here. Mullins in center, Rutschman catching, Santander in left, Mount Castle at first, Gunnar Henderson the DH, Urias at third, Hayes in right, Frazier second, and Mateo at short. For the Marlins, Arias is at second, Segura at third, Cooper at first, Jazz Chisholm in center, Jorge Soler the DH, Avicel Garcia in right, De La Cruz in left, Stallings catching, and Wendell at short. Pitcher catcher hold ratings, Gibson is a, mi is a zero, but Rutschman's a minus two, so a minus two factor there. Alcantara is a zero, and so is Stallings, so his rating is a zero. Ballpark effects. Singles are 1 to 10 for both lefties and righties. Home runs are 1 to 6 for both lefties and righties. So hopefully this setup will be okay. I've got as much light here as I could possibly get on the subject. So I don't know. I can try adding even more light, but that might be too much light. I'm not sure. Uh, there is such a thing as too much light, I think. Let's see. Maybe not. Maybe we'll do it this way. Maybe we we'll get really good light in here. So we shall see. So Sandy Alcantara finishing up the warm-up tosses, and he will be facing Cedric Mullins of the Orioles. Alcantara against Mullins. And I've also game, got the game up on the computer. I'm going to try to score it as we play on the cards and dice. I'm going to try to score it on the computer as well. Looking through my phone, it looks like everything is okay. Doesn't appear to be too much light on the subject. Again, this is a lot of a testing here because it's a brand new setup for me pretty much. So using the Stratomatic score form B, we'll see how it turns out. Alcantara to Mullins and we're underway. We get a 5-11 and Mullins is a lefty. 5-11 is a leadoff walk. So right away... Mullins may be looking to get a lead. He's a 5 or a 6 to get the lead. And the factor is a 0. So if he gets the jump or gets the lead, it would be a 19 minus 2. It will be a 17. So if he gets the lead, it's a 1 to 17. So it's worth the gamble. And he gets the 6. He does get the lead. So it's a 1 to 17 for Cedric Mullins to steal second base. And barely. He just does it. Just barely gets in there, and boy, Joey Wendell protesting, but to no avail. As the six stolen base was successful. And that puts a runner in scoring position with nobody out for the catcher, Adley Rutschman. Havoc roll, nothing happening. Alcantara to Rutschman. We get a 5-7, switch your bang left. That's a 1-19 to single, so that's a single one star. And that's going to put runners at, at the corners with nobody out. And Alcantara, shaky beginnings. Rutschman will not be held at first. Early in the game, they will play back for the double play. They would like to turn two. Anthony Santander, the left fielder for the Orioles. Alcantara. 5-12 this time against the lefty again. It's a ground ball second base X. Second baseman is Arias. He is a 3-E-5. The infield is back, so they were hoping to turn the double play. 
The run on third is going to almost automatically score, you would think. Three and a ten, so we'll check that out. Three and a ten for a second baseman. Three and a ten is a G2, so it's just going to be a fielder's choice. But that's a 16. It could be an error. He's an E5. E5 and a 16 is right there. It's a one base error on Arias. Is that's a 16, and he is an E5. So E5 at second base, a 16 right there, an E1. So they don't even get the force play. It's going to be an E4 on Arias. It will score Mullins and send Rutschman to second base. So when it rains, it pours. Runners at first and second, nobody out for first baseman Ryan Mountcastle. 2-7 for Mountcastle. That's a ground ball shortstop A plus, but the infield was not in. So there's no worries there. It's just going to be a 6-4-3 double play. And the runner will go to third, but at least that's going to what they hope will quell any future rallies. Because now there's two outs and a runner at third base. And that brings up the designated hitter, Gunnar Henderson. Contra trying to limit the damage to one run. 111, that's a ballpark single check. Ballpark singles are 1 to 10. That's a 12, so it's a liner to second, and Alcantara has done it. He has limited the damage. Just the one run is all the Orioles will get. Could have been a lot worse. We go to the bottom of the first. It is Baltimore 1 and the Marlins coming to bat. And Kyle Gibson on the bump. And he'll be facing Louis Arias, the leadoff man. <clears throat> for the Marlins. Let me make sure the putting the chart in there didn't mess up my focus any. Looks like the focus is still good. Hopefully the lighting and the sound is okay. It's going to take a while to get used to this new setup of the analog, but I kind of like it actually, so it's kind of growing on me. All right, here's Gibson to Arias. 2-7, and that's a ground ball to short. Certainly a lot more economical for me. I don't have to print out the lineups, and so it saves me paper, ink, and time because it takes time to do all that. So doing it this way certainly is helping me as well. So here's Gene Segura. That's a 6-7, and that's, a, that's trouble. 1-6 to six is a double. That's a 15. It will be a single. Lead off sing or no, a one out single rather by Segura. And let's see if he wants to try to get a jump to get the lead. It, it will be a minus two, so being held be a minus four. It'll be a one to 13 if he can get the lead. They're going to go ahead and try for it on a one to 13. But he's got to get a four or a five. He does not, so nothing to worry about there. Of course, he will be held, but he won't get the he won't uh, be able to get the lead. And that brings up first baseman Garrett Cooper. Gibson 3-7 to Cooper is a single to right field. And now we'll see if the runner can move to third base. He was being held. He runs at a 12. Was being held makes him 11. But going from right field, on throw from right field to third base, you add two, makes him a 13. And then the right fielder arm, Hayes, is a minus two, which makes it an 11. So I think all things considered, they're going to hold Segura. It's only a 55% chance they're going to hold Segura at second base. So the single will put runners at first and second for Jazz Chisholm stepping to the plate. Could have gambled, but you don't want to run yourself out of an inning either. I forgot to put the one run for Baltimore there, didn't I? Gibson. 5-11 against the lefty is a ballpark single again. It's 1-10. to 10. That's a 5. It will be a single. It's only one star. It's going to load the bases. So the bases are loaded now with only one out for the designated hitter, Jorge Soler. Infield is back for the double play. 
Gibson having first inning troubles just like Alcantara had. 3-6, and that's a walk. It's going to force in a run. A walk with the bases loaded. Segura will score. Cooper takes third. Chisholm takes second. Bases loaded walk. We are tied at one, and the Marlins looking for more. Is Avisel Garcia the batter? Gibson has to get things under control. Could use a double play in the worst way. 5-4. That's going to be a fly ball center field X. That's Cedric Mullins. He is a one, so that will certainly help him. But with the bases loaded, runner at third, it could be a sacrifice fly. You never know. It's a 1-E-5. One, one and a 1. <laughs> Not exactly what they were looking for. A 1 and a 1. He will make the catch. It is an F-1. And he's an E-5. And that is a 11, an 11. E-5, there is no 11. But it is an F-1. And F-1 means all runners tag and advance one base. Not just the runner on third, but everybody moves up. So it will be a sacrifice fly to center field. And everybody will move up. Cooper will score. Chisholm will take third. And so Lair will take second. So one of those rare sack flies where everybody moves up. That's how deep it was. And now the Marlins take a 2-1 to one lead. With runners at second and third and two outs for Brian De La Cruz. Gibson trying to hold it to just a two-run advantage or two-run outburst. 2-8, two, and he does. He strikes out De La Cruz to end the inning. But the Marlins pick up two runs, and they take a two-to-one lead after one inning of play. And now we go to the top of the second. Alcantara back out. We'll be facing Urias, Hayes, and Frazier for the Orioles. We That's a leaner. I'm going to re-roll that. That's a 5-6 against a right-hander, and that's a ground ball to short. One away. Urias is retired. Here's Austin Hayes, the right fielder. Four six against the right-hander Hayes is a ground ball to third. So a much better start for Alcantara than he had in the first inning. Two quick outs for second baseman Adam Frazier. Three, four for Frazier is a line out to third. That's going to end the inning. One, two, three go the Orioles here in the second. We go to the bottom of the second, still two to one ball game. Favor of the fish. Gibson. We'll be facing the catcher, Jacob Stallings, followed by Wendell and Arias. 4-8 against a right-hander. Strike him out. So Stallings out on strikes. Brings up nine, number nine here, Joey Wendell. 3-9 for Wendell. One to nine is a home run. That's a 16. It will be a double. Joey Wendell. A one-out double. Let's look at the number again. 3-9. Brings us right here. 1-9, to nine, a homer. 10-20, to 20, a double. That's a 16. So, Joey Wendell with the one-out double. And that brings up Arias. Nothing on the Havoc. 3-8 for Arias. That's a single two stars, and that will score the run. And the Marlins take a 3-1 to one lead. Three to one ball game now. Arias will not be held. Three, 
your Segura. 3-8. Ground ball shortstop A. That's a 6-4-3 double play to end the inning. But the damage done on the RBI single off the bat of Luis Arias. And at the end of two complete is the Marlins 3 and the Orioles 1. And Kyle Gibson might not be around too much longer. He doesn't pitch any better than this. Alcantara back out will face the number nine hitter, Mateo. And then follow up with the top of the order, Mullins and Rutschman. 1-7 is a fly to center. One away. Bringing up Cedric Mullins. Contra, 1-11 to Mullins as they fly to right field. Two down. Two up and two down for Adley Rutschman. 1-8 for Rutschman. He's going to draw a two-out walk. Rutschman not going to be held. Not going to try for a lead or anything of that nature. Santander, the batter. 4-2, switch it everybody left. That's a split chance. 1-11 to is a single. That's a six. It'll be a single. One star only. And that puts runners at first and second with two outs. For Ryan Mountcastle. Orioles looking for a two-out rally. 6-5. They won't get it. It's a ground ball to third. We'll say it's a fielder's choice as they go to second base for the final out. Five to four if you're scoring at home and you know you should be. So that's going to do it for the Orioles here in the third. We go to the bottom of the third. It is still a three to one Marlins lead. And Gibson looking for answers, but right now can't find them. Here's Garrett Cooper. Cooper singled and scored his first trip. 6-2 is a fly ball right field X. That's Austin Hayes, and Hayes is a 2-E-0. Is that right? He's an E-0. Did I write that down correctly? Yes, that's his card. He is a 2 with an E-0, so he cannot make an error. He cannot make an error. He can only not get it with his range. So we don't need to roll for an error because there's no error to worry about. He is a two. And that's a six. So that should be okay for a right fielder. Two and a six. Two and a six is an F2. So that's good enough. And he will put Cooper away, one away. So one down. And that will send up Jazz Chisholm. 110 for Chisholm, struck him out. Two down for Jorge Soler, the DH. 5-7, and that's a 1-6 to six single. That's a 4. It'll be a single, a two-out single for Jorge Soler. And he will not be held. Here's Abisail Garcia. Gibson, 211 to Garcia is a ballpark single check. 1 to 10. That's a 1. It will be a single. One star only. And that's going to put runners at first and second. And now the Marlins looking for the two out rally as they get back to back singles. And now look to. Brian De La Cruz to try to bring a run home for more insurance against Kyle Gibson. 6-5, ground ball shortstop X. That is Mateo. He's a 2-E-19. 2-E-19. 2-5 is up for debate. 2-5 is a G-3, but nobody's being held on, so he's okay. He will make that play. 
It's a 10, and he is an E19. So a shortstop. E19, there is no 10. It's a good play. He goes to first. It's his only play is to first base, but that's going to be good enough to end the inning. So at the end of three, it is three to one Marlins still in the lead. Coming up for the Orioles, it'll be Gunnar Henderson, Austin Hayes, I'm sorry, Urias and Hayes. Henderson, Urias, and Hayes do up for the Orioles as they're looking to find some answers against Alcantara. Got a run in the first, but they could add more, and it might be coming back to bite them. 1 3 is a single to left field, so good start for the Orioles if you're an Oriole fan. Gunnar Henderson gets that single. To get a jump, he needs a 7, so they're going to see if he can get the jump. He does not get the jump, so he will hold fast, and here's Urias. 6 7, and that's a strikeout. Alcantara with the K. And that'll bring up Austin Hayes, right fielder. 3-7, and that's a fly to right field. Two down. And that'll turn it over to Adam Frazier. Nothing on the Havoc. Here is Alcantara to Frazier. 4-3 to a lefty is a ballpark single check. 1-10. to ten. That's a 1. It'll be a single 1 star. And that will put runners at first and second. And again, a 2-out rally by the Orioles. But they're looking at the number 9 hitter, Mateo, to bring home a run. Alcantara to Mateo. 1-7. He's going to fly to center, and that's going to end the inning. So they come up a little bit empty and leave two more on base. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. It's still 3-1. to one. So the left on bases might be coming back to get them. Stallings will lead off the bottom of the fourth for the Marlins. 6-7, and that's trouble for Gibson. 1-6 to six is a double. That's a 7, though, so it's going to be a leadoff single for Stallings. And he will not be held as a terrible base runner. Double check and make sure nothing's going Everything seems copacetic. All right, so Wendell, the batter, against Gibson. 6-8 against a lefty is a ground ball second base A. That is a 4-6-3 double play. Just what the doctor ordered. Two quick outs. Bases wiped out for Louis Arias. 1-7, and that is a ground ball second base to end the inning. So the double play certainly helped out. Keeps the score 3-1 to one after four innings. Both pitchers have six for their fatigue, so they still can go a couple more innings as long as they're effective. Cedric Mullins, the top of the order, due up for the Orioles. He is 0 for 1 with a walk and a stolen base and a run scored. 4-8 against the lefty, and he will draw a walk again. Another walk issue to Mullins. Could he try to steal again? Stole 19 bases on the season, only got caught three times. Again, he needs that five or a six to get the jump. He gets the six, so he gets the jump. He's going to go again. One to 17. One to 17. And he's in there, and it's a possible throwing error on Stallings. And Stallings' T rating is an eight. One to eight, he throws this away. He does not. It's just going to be a stolen base as Wendell kept it in front of him, but it is the second stolen base of the game for Cedric Mullins. He's in scoring position with nobody out. It also takes away the double play. 
And here's Adley Rutschman. Alcantara to Rutschman. 5-5 switch hitter. Fly to center. One away. And that will send up Anthony Santander. Nothing on the Havoc. Alcantara to Santander. 4-4 four, four, switch hitter bang left is a catcher X. Catcher X. Jacob Stallings is a 3 with a E5. 3 and a 5. Might be some sort of a PP type of deal. 3 and a 5 is a PP. That's a 13. And he is an E5. There is no 13 there, so we go to the PP section. PP section here. With runners on base, a pitcher gets past the catcher for a pass ball. When using this, refer to Superman rules instruction. For blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if pass ball does not occur, the batter pops out. So, pass ball is dependent on the wild pitch rating of Alcantara, which is a 4. Nope, no wild pitch, so it's going to be a pop out to the catcher for out number two. That's the way I play it, according to this according to this right here. That's the way I play the PPs down here in the bold print. We're using the balk wild pitch pass ball rules on Super Advanced to determine if a pass ball occurs, and that's by looking at the wild pitch rating of the pitcher. So no wild pitch occurred. And that'll bring up Ryan Mountcastle. Nothing on the Havoc. Here is Mountcastle. 5-12, and that's a ground ball second base X. And the runner at Mullins was being held, so the second baseman Arias now drops to a 4-E5. Four, 4 and 1, that's going to be a base hit all the way around. That's going to score. Mullins. That's going to be an SI2. So that will score Mullins automatically on that one. Even if it was still a three, it still would have been an SI2. That's a 12. And let's see, he is a 12, and the second baseman, Arias, is an E5. Or let's see here. Yeah, he's an E5, and that is a 12. And there is no 12, but it is going to be a base hit for Mountcastle. That will score the run, and the Orioles cut the lead to 3-2. Three 3-2 to two. Three to two ball game on the RBI single by Mountcastle. He will not be held. Two outs now for Gunnar Henderson. 1-10, and that's a strikeout to end the inning. But the Orioles pick up a run. On the RBI single from Mountcastle cuts the lead to three to two. As we go to the bottom of the fifth. And it will be Gibson back on the mound to face Segura, Cooper, and Chisholm. Segura, Cooper, and Chisholm. Segura, Cooper, and Chisholm. 4-6, and that's a strikeout. So Segura is out of there. And that'll send up Garrett Cooper. Garrett Cooper, your batter. Whoa, Sua Dice on the D20, so let's try that again. It'll 1-4, and that's a ground ball to third. For out number two. Some say I should have only re-rolled the D20, but when any of the dice pop out, I just re-roll everything. Try to keep it clean. Here's Jazz Chisholm. 3-8 for Chisholm. Struck him out. So it's a 1-2-3 inning for Gibson. He certainly needed that. And at the end of 5 complete, it is the Marlins 3 and the Orioles 2. And now these are the point of weakness innings for both pitchers coming up right now. Point of weakness is coming right up. 
And it'll be Urias, Hayes, and Frazier do up for the Orioles. Let me make sure that all of this is going to fit in. I think it will. So, Alcantara facing Urias. 2-6, and he walks him. So that's the first ding on the point of weakness is the leadoff walk. Urias will not be held. Here is Austin Hayes. Havoc roll, nothing happening. 6-10, and that's a fly to center. One away. One down, and that's going to send up Adam Frazier. Tying run is at first base. 6-3 to a lefty. Ground ball pitcher X, he's a 4-E-39. That could be interesting, a 4-E-39. 4 and a 7, that could get through for a hit very easily. 4 and a 7. Actually, it's a G3, so the runner will advance. Check it for an error. That's an 11. He's an E39. There is no 11, amazingly. On the E39, there's a 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, and 13, but no 11. So it's going to be just a G3. So it's a 1-3 put out with Urias going to second base. So it's a clutch situation, as someone once said, for Jorge Mateo. See if he can bring home that tying run. Alcantara to Mateo. 2-3, and that's a ballpark single check. 1-10. to ten. That's a 16, though. He will line it to the shortstop to end the the inning as Wendell snags it and the Orioles come away empty handed leaving a runner in scoring position once again so Kyle Gibson back out his fatigue inning is starting right now and Jorge Soler is your leadoff batter Soler one for one a walk and a single 2-5, and that's a single right there, so he is 2 for 2. So Lair gets it done. He will not be held. Here's Avisail Garcia, right fielder. Nothing on the Havoc. 5-6 against a right-hander. 1-5 to five is a triple. That's a 7. It's a single 2 stars. And... Uh, Gibson might very well be looking to leave this game. Runners on the corners, nobody out for De La Cruz. They're all right-handers coming up, but the bullpen is going for the Orioles. Gives us a chance to go through who they have available in their bullpen. And so the Orioles from the right-hand side have Brian Baker, Mike Bauman, Felix Batista, and Austin Voth. Four right-handers. They have three left-handers. They have Sionel Perez, Daniel Colombe, and Keegan Aiken. So that's who they have available. And with the lineup that's there, it looks like might be looking towards a right-hander. Actually, it might be looking towards a left-hander because after De La Cruz, Gibson's going to pitch to De La Cruz. But after that, you got the righty Stallings, and you got lefty Wendell and lefty Arias. So, and you have to pitch at least to three batters, so they can't bring in a righty just to pitch to one guy. So, who do they go to? They are going to Daniel Colombe. He will be warming up in the bullpen for the Orioles, Daniel Colombe. But right now, they're going to give Gibson a chance to get De La Cruz. Runners are at the corners, nobody out. Infield is in. They want to choke that runoff. Infield is in. Two 
Gibson to De La Cruz, 3-4, and that's a ground ball third base A. Now, it probably would have been a double play had they played back, but they're playing in. So let's go to the chart. Super advanced chart. Infield is in, runners at the corners, and we rolled a ground ball A. That's an eight. Batter out, run on third holes, run on first, advances to second. So according to this, they get the batter out, and that's it. Where had they been back with the runners on the corners, there would have been a two, and it would have been a double play, but the run would have scored. So Garcia is going to end up going to second base, and they're going to get De La Cruz out. It's going to go five to three, one away for Jacob Stallings, but the run does not score. Now runners are at second and third. Of course, the infield has to stay in at this point. So it's a ground out. Five to three. Runners at second and third with one out for Jacob Stallings. Colombe will be ready to come in and face Wendell after this. Gibson, though, looking to try to finish strong against Stallings with the infield in. 3-11, and that is a ballpark single check. Ballpark single, 3-11. The ballpark single is a 10. That's a 3, so it's a base hit. And that will score the run. And Garcia will take third. And that's going to be it for Gibson. He is done. He will leave the ball game. With the two lefties coming up, they will go to Colombe. So he can't close the book on Gibson because... You never know what might happen. Gibson will end up going five and a third innings. But you can't, like I said, you can't close the book on him at this point. Although we can add up the hits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I got him for eleven hits. He's given up. Walks and strikeouts. One walk. I got him for just the one walk. Strikeouts. One, two, three, four, five. But can't put the runs down there yet because I don't know what's going to happen the rest of the way. So Colombe will be coming on to pitch for the Orioles here in the bottom of the sixth. And again, the infield is, of course, Still in with runners at the corners. You, you don't want to pretend you can get a double play because they may not do it. So the infield is in. The infield is in. One run is in. The infield is also in. There's one out. Runners at the corners. Colombe now. A two chance for a balk or a pass ball. That's a three P chance for a balk. His balk rating is a 12. He could balk a run home right here. And he does. So Colombe balks a run home. How do you like that? It comes into the game and balks. And that's going to score the run. So the first thing he does is come in and balk. And it is now 5-2 to two Marlins. Infield is back to normal now that the runner is at second base. Colombe, 311 to Wendell, and that's a ballpark single check. That's a five. It'll be a base hit. And that'll put the runner to third base. So the ballpark checks have been coming up clean for the Marlins in this one. And now we're back to Arias with runners at the corners. Now the infield is going to go back to the double play chances with the infield in. Actually, let's see. What do they want to do here? Arias. Actually, they're going to play for the double play. That's what they're going to play for. They're going to play for the double play. Two again. Could be a chance for another balk or pass ball. Chance for another balk. Fifteen, though. This time he does not balk. Colombe, 4-7, and that is a walk. He didn't balk, but he walks. And now the bases are loaded. 
So Colombe still has to face one more batter. He's only faced two. He's got to face three. And in the Oriole bullpen, right-hander Brian Baker will be coming on after this at bat because they got to get Colombe out of there. Infield looking for the double play with the bases loaded. And only one out. 5-6 to a righty. 5-6 to a righty is bad news. That's a 6. So that's a double, two stars. Arias will take third, but scoring will be Stallings and Wendell. And now you can close the book on Gibson because all the runs now have come across the plate. And Arias didn't get anybody out. He didn't, fa he didn't get anyone out. And he gave up two hits and a walk. And at least one run is his responsibility, but they've still got two on with only one out. So Colombe is out of there. And Brian Baker is on. Four and three, three six zero oh ERA on the season. But the Orioles are in free fall now as they trail it seven to two. And Segura is your batter. So Brian Baker is your new pitcher. He's actually a minus three now with the minus one hold and the minus two from Rutschman, but I don't think that really matters at this point. Second and third, infield is back to being in again. They have no choice but to be in. Baker to Segura. Oh, no, that was just Segura that, that hit, so it's actually Cooper. My bad. Baker to Cooper. Baker to Cooper. 1-5, and he struck him out. That's a big strikeout for out number two. Now the infield can go back to normal. And now the ninth man to bat in the inning, Jazz Chisholm, is up to the plate. Baker to Chisholm. 3-9, and that's a one. That's a ballpark home run on a 3-9. It's a 1-6. to six. That's a 19, so it's just a deep fly to right to end the inning. So Jazz Chisholm just missed one. But four runs for the Marlins. So Colombe is going to allow one run, and six runs are coming in off of Gibson. So we go to the seventh. And it is seven to two, favor of the Marlins and Alcantara. We'll go another inning with the big lead. They're going to go ahead and let him pitch another inning with this big lead. Cedric Mullins, the batter, six eight, and that's a one to eleven double, and that's what he has. That's a seven, so it's a double for Cedric Mullins. So back come the Orioles. They need to come. All the way back because they got a, their work cut out for them. Mullins will be held at second. Rutschman the batter. 3-7 for Rutschman. He flies to left, and that's one away. Rutschman is retired, and that brings up Anthony Santander. Two five for Santander, and he's going to fly to center. That's out number two for Ryan C Mountcastle. Alcantara four four. Catcher X, that's Stallings. He's a 3 E5. 3 and a 3. 3 and a 3 for a catcher is a W slash G. W slash G. And that is a total of 5, so it's a rare play on a W slash G. How about that? W slash G, a rare play. So we have W slash G rare play with runners on. The pitcher trips during his delivery and the ball sails over the head of the catcher for a wild pitch. Runners advance one base. How about that? So it's a wild pitch as he tripped on the mound. Got his cleats all caught up. And he uncorks the wild pitch. 
And that will move the runner to third with two outs. Still going to take a base hit from Mountcastle to get it done. Alcantara to Mountcastle. 6-2. It's a ground ball first base X. So actually a first baseman error here could bring home a run. Cooper's a 4-E-7. Four, 4 and a 10. Should get to that, I would think. 4 and a 10. 4 and a 10 is a G3. Nobody was being held, so the... And the infield's not in, so the 4-10 is good on the G3. That's an 11. He, he's an E7. There is no 11, so it's a good play. It's going to be a 3-1 put out as Cooper will flip to Alcantara covering to end the inning. So it remains 7-2. to two. As we go to the seventh inning stretch, I'm going to stand up and stretch myself. That's going to be all for Alcantara. He's going to go seven innings. They'll cap him at seven innings. And he's going to give up two runs. See how many hits he gave up. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. I've got him for six hits. He walked one, two, three, four. Walked four. Struck out one, two. <coughs> Just struck out two. But he does come away as the probable winner, unless something really weird happens. Due up for the Marlins, it'll be Jorge Soler. <coughs> but I'm going to take a stretch break real quick. Stand up and make sure that everything is still in good standing to be seen. Which hopefully, whoops, go this way. Went the wrong way there, didn't I? I'm trying to show the corner of the score sheet. I need to go further this way. All right. So I think we're in good shape. Brian Baker is on, and he faced two batters and got them both out. So he's definitely okay to pitch this seventh inning. Without any problems. So Lair will now get going. Baker, 2-4. Ground ball to second. And that's one away. But the Marlins comfortably in front, 7-2. to two. Or at least seemingly comfortable in front. Here's Garcia. 4-7 against the right-hander is a walk. So Garcia draws the base on balls. He will not be held. And Brian De La Cruz, your batter. Nothing on the habit. 5-7. And that's ground ball second base X, but nobody's being held. So the second baseman, Frazier, is a 4-E-8. 4 and a 17. He'll get to that. Might even be able to turn a double play on a 4 and a 17. 4 and a 17 is a G1, so we'll get to it. That is a 15. Let's see if he makes an error. E8 and a 15. There's a 16, 17, and 18, but no 15, so he got lucky there. It will be a 4, 6, 3 inning ending double play. So we go to the eighth inning, still 7-2 to two Marlins. But now we need a new pitcher for Miami, and we'll look at their bullpen, see who their available players are. They have from the right side Matt Barnes, Tanner Scott, J.T. Chargois, Huascar Brazaban, and Dylan Floro. From the left side, they have Andrew Nardi and A.J. Puck. So coming up for the Orioles is Gunnar Henderson, lefty. But then there's righties after that, so might be looking to bring in right-handers. And they are going to bring on J.T. Chargois. And he's 1-0 with 361 ERA and a save. So J.T. Chargois will be on. And he's a plus three 
with a zero, so that's a plus three, but I don't think the Orioles down seven to two are going to go anywhere to even worry about it, but it's there. Okay, Gunnar Henderson is your batter against JT Chargois. And Alcantara in line to get the win. 210, Gunnar Henderson. And that's a ballpark home run chance, 1 to 6, but that's a 15. Without the ballparks, that would have been a home run. Instead, it is simply a fly to right field. So that time, Marlins Park, otherwise known as Lone Depot Park, cost them a home run. One down for Ramon Urias. Now we're in the seventh, so or in the eighth rather, so we can certainly use pinch hitters if they want to go that route. But Urias, pretty decent hitter, 264. They're going to stick stick with him. 6-3 is a fly ball left field excess. De La Cruz is a 4-E6. Four, 4-12. E four Should get to that. 4 and a 12. No, he does not. Four, no, yes, he does. 4 and a 12 is an F1. The last number. 11 would have been a single, but that's an F1. That's an 11. He is an E6. E6 and no 11. So it was by the shoestrings, but he got it. And De La Cruz makes the catch for out number two. It's kind of nice. It's been for the Orioles. Here's Austin Hayes. 3-2, and that's a hit-by-pitch-plus injury. And, of course, in this league, Demolition League, we are definitely doing injuries. So let's see if Austin Hayes will have to miss any time. Go to the injury chart and take a look and see what we got. Batter injury, 1-4, to four, he can stay in the game. 5 or 6, he only misses this game. Anything else is over here. Now, since we're doing one-third of a season, we're going to cut any injury in one in thirds. That's a four, so actually he's going to be okay. So he shakes it off, stays in the game, and that brings up Adam Frazier. Charquois, nothing on that. Three-nine, and he's going to ground it to short to end the inning. So nothing doing for the O's in the eighth inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth. We'll get a new pitcher for the Orioles, as Baker has done enough, I think. Baker ended up pitching an inning and two-thirds, and he struck out one, walked one. Did not give up any hits or runs. So we come over here on this part for Baltimore to add at their fourth pitcher to be used in the game. And we'll see who that's supposed to be. Coming up is Stallings, Wendell, and Arias, a couple of lefties. So they're going to go to Cyanel Perez, a left-hander, or Cyanel Perez, however it's pronounced. He's a plus nine hold, but it really at this point, seven to two, I don't think that's really going to come into play. He is on. Chargois pitched one inning, and he, that's all he's going to pitch for the Marlins. And he, let's see, hit a batter, but gave up nothing else. All right, so Jacob Stallings will be facing Perez here in the bottom of the eighth. Of a 7-2 game. 3-7 for Stallings against the lefty. Fly ball to center. One down for Joey Wendell. Wendell, two for three, a single double, two runs scored. 5-5, five, five, and that's a strikeout for Perez. Back to the top of the order, and Arias. One for three, a single and a walk. 6-2, that's a fly to left, and that's going to end the inning. So one, two, three inning for Perez. He went one inning pitched. 
and gave up nothing. So we go to the top of the ninth. Last chance for the Orioles, although it's not a good one. They're down by five runs. But we'll look at the Marlins bullpen. Obviously, it's not a save situation. Uh, and we'll see who they want to go to. Out of the pen. Coming up for the Orioles, it will be a pinch hitter for Mateo, most likely. And then Mullins and Rutschman. So they might want to go to a lefty out of the bullpen. I'm thinking A.J. Puck is the guy they're going to be looking at. Actually, no, they're not. He's more their closer. They don't want to bring in a closer just yet. So they're going to be looking at Nardi. So Andrew Nardi is going to be your pitcher. 8-1 and one with a 2.67 ERA and three saves. Andrew Nardi. It's a minus four holds, so that would be a... Although the Orioles aren't going to run, obviously, you wouldn't think they would be running. It'll be, f it'll be uh, Mateo scheduled, but like I said, could see a pinch hitter because Mateo only hit 2.17. So I think the Orioles are going to look to their bench and see if they can find anybody that can provide a spark, perhaps. And with that in mind, we will go to the Oriole bench and see who they have. So I dropped some of my cards. So let's see who they have that they can go to for pinch hitters. They've got Ryan O'Hearn, a lefty. James McCann and Ryan McKenna. Those are the three that are on their bench. Against the lefty, I'm looking more at McKenna. He's a 254 hitter. So McKenna will pinch hit for Mateo. McKenna will pinch hit for Mateo. So we're going to have Mateo. Pinch hitting in the ninth. Right here. Mateo pinch hitting. I'm um, McKenna rather. Pinch hitting in the ninth. Against Nardi. Andrew Nardi. So. Go to the computer and make these changes. Nardi is in. And the pinch hitter is McKenna for Mateo. And we're ready to go. Top of the ninth. Last chance. Nardi against McKenna. 1-2 against the lefty is a fly to center. And so he fails in the pinch. There's one away. And that's going to bring up Cedric Mullins. Nardi to Mullins. 1-8 against a left-hander is a fly to center. So back-to-back -back fly outs to center field. And now the absolute last chance is for Adley Rutschman. And Rutschman, 1 for 3 on the day. 210, and that is a single, straight out single for Rutschman. Keeps the game going temporarily for Anthony Santander. Make sure there's nothing on the Havoc. There's not. Nardi to Santander, 210, and that is a ground ball to short. That's going to end the ball game. They'll go the short way, 6 to 4 for the fielder's choice. And the Miami Marlins take the opener over the 100-win Baltimore Orioles by the score of 6-4. to four. I'm sorry, a score of 7-2. to two. It was the 6-4 to four on the scoring. That's what I meant to say. 7-2, to two, the final for the Marlins. Seven runs, 13 hits, and one error. 
for the Orioles, two runs, seven hits, and no errors. Nardi on the inning went one inning and gave up one hit, nothing else, no strikeouts. Winning pitcher was Alcantara. Losing pitcher was Gibson. No home runs in the game. Well, there were a couple of close calls, but no home runs in the game. But there is your final line score. Seven runs, 13 hits, one error for the Marlins. They left on six. And for the Orioles, two runs, seven hits, no errors. They left on ten. So if we, and I'll show this very briefly, since I was scoring the game on the computer. I'll show you the box score as it is there. You can see that. So Marlins win it by the score of 7-2. to two. Alcantara the win. Gibson the loss. Player of the game. If you had to pick one. Boy, it's a tough call. Alcantara, I think, for seven innings pitched in two runs, I think holding that Oriole, powerful Oriole team to just two runs, only one of them earned. I think your player of the game is Sandy Alcantara. So the Marlins improved to 1-0. and Orioles dropped to 0-1. Oh but again, it's early. If I play out the whole thing, they got 53 more games to play. So one game does not a season make. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of old school Stratomatic 2023 season. I'm trying to learn the players, trying to appreciate the game so that I can watch the guys when they're playing now and try to know who they are and how they perform and whatnot. So I've got the 73 Stratomatic for the game of the week and the modern 2023 for this league here. So until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.